the first assembly rather. Um, so yeah. Okay, perfect. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to share my screen. Uh, and I'm going to start a new part. So I've just been working away at this one, but we'll start from scratch. Okay. Okay. Oh, wait. Is someone else joining as well? Do we see anything? No. Uh, no. Um, actually, could you give me a second? I think I'll open the Zoom on another computer so that it can work on SolidWorks at the same time. No stress at all. Perfect. I'll be back in a sec. Okay. I'll pause the recording. All right, thank you. No worries. Just for all the folks back. So uh, we're just starting the recording right now. Um, I'm going to share my screen here. So essentially for this workshop, uh, we'll, we'll have insinuated that you already have the part file for the uh, connecting rod, the big end, and the big end bearing inserts. Uh, are you able to see my screen at the moment? Yep. Yeah. OK, brilliant. So uh, we've got this bottom half done. Uh, right now, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the piston head. So if you can see my mouse right there, mm -hmm. and it's fasteners. So and that's its bolt and its nuts. So okay. uh, I'm going to start a new share of my screen and go right into the SolidWorks. So um, do you have a new file open, Antoine? Yes, I do. OK, perfect. So essentially what I want you to do is to go on the top plane and create a new sketch, okay? Uh, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna open the other piston assembly that we had, just so we can uh, see what the dimensions were once again. So are you able to see my new window now with the connecting rod? Yeah, I can see everything. Okay, I think. brilliant. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on this guy and edit the sketch to see the dimensions. And we'll notice that, okay, what we have is a circle with an interior diameter of two, and then the larger one has a diameter of 2.5, okay? So no issue with that. So I'm gonna create a new part. So if I go into this, uh, yeah, sorry, is this the part file? Yeah, this is the new one. <laughs> I have too many windows open right now. So we create two circles. Oh, I got to change my units as well. So just ensure that it's all in inches. So IPS. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's Good. such a pain. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, OK, so I'm going to dimension this guy. And essentially, what we're going to get is uh, we're going to create a circle with diameter 2. So this is our interior circle. And then what we're going to do from there is we're going to create another circle, but that one has diameter, let me see, 2.5. Yeah. So we put this guy out and let the dimensions do all the work for us. So 2.5 for this guy. Now the semi trickier part here is what we're going to do is we're going to create a housing of sorts for the, uh, this is for the connecting rod or the wrist pin. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to draw a rectangle, right? So we're going to extend it from this top portion here, make sure it's horizontal to this left side of our circle. And essentially we can just draw a arbitrary rectangle. It's just, it's nice to ensure that the edge is tangent like we see here. So tangent on both ends mm -hmm. and, we, and we can check this with its relations. So if we go here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift click. So I'm going to shift click on this guy as well. And you'll see we have both of these selected and I'm going to click tangent. So this is for the left side. We're going to do the same for the right side. And we're going to do the same for the top, but not for the bottom. Okay. And you'll see quite soon why. So essentially what we want is we want the vertical height of this guy to be approximately 2.3. So 2.3 inches is how high we want this rectangle to be. And if we go from there, you'll see it sort of has this sort of undercut of sorts. And now this is when we start to uh, allow the shape to start to take some form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the Trim Entities tool. And I'm going to drag through this guy, drag through that guy, this one, this one, 
this bottom edge here. Okay. Wait, if you don't mind, um, give me just a sec, because I think my bottom line, I dimensioned it without mod. I, like, yeah, no worries. I'll so, delete my, my, my rectangle if you don't mind. Yeah, go for it. Uh, if you want, you can also share your screen. So I'll make you a co-host right now. Uh, oh, well, it's, it's actually on the other screen, so. Uh, OK, OK, never mind. So then I couldn't share it. OK, I'll restart. Yeah, no worries. Sorry and about just, that. Hey, it's all good. Uh, let me know if you have any parts that you're concerned with. I'm just going to read ahead a little bit. Um, but yeah, so far, this shape won't be too complex to make. OK. Yeah. And if you have any questions regarding functionality as well, just let me know. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, I didn't realize there's a lot of extra preparation that goes into these workshops. So like, uh, I, I'm simultaneously making a training document for whoever wants to see it as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. Okay. 2.3. Perfect. I have it. Sorry about that. Hey, no worries. So did you manage to do the trims as well? Uh, I'll do it pretty quickly. No worries. Yeah, so essentially all the interior lines you need is just this circle here and then this bottom. Perfect. Yeah. That's done. Okay. And it's always good practice to make sure your sketches are fully defined. So as you can see right down there in the bottom, it says so for me. And Perfect. this can be done with dimensioning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude this contour, excluding the inner circle. And we're going to extrude it by 1.5 inches. Also, these dimensions are way out of whack. Uh, the reason why I've gone with inches is because I started my document initially with inches. So if you think about it in the context of like an actual object, this is going to be gigantic. Like it's going to be like this. <laughs> OK, I see. Yeah, so this whole assembly is not accurate in that regard. But uh, So we have this height here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to refer back to our revised piston connecting rod. So exit the sketch here. And what I want to do is I want to examine the height of this extrusion. So how thick this whole thing is, because what I want to do is actually, so that part we just extruded, it's going to fall flush on this surface, right? Mm -hmm. And essentially what we want to do is we want to mirror it about the center of this thickness such that we have another part of it on the bottom there, such that the wrist pin can fall between three different holes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the evaluate tool and measure, and I'm going to click on this side length here. And we can see that it is 1.6 inches, right? So if we go halfway, it's going to be 0.8. So if we refer back to our document, uh, so I'm going to go into the features tab, click on reference geometry. And we're going to create a new plane. And now for the plane, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the bottom edge. So it's important that you select the bottom edge of your, uh, of your extrusion, just so that we stick consistent with our coordinate system. So we click that. And you'll see, I've already done this before. So it's already set up an offset. <laughs> but uh, essentially, this is going to be the halfway point of our connecting rod. So if I do that and press OK, we should be good to go in that regard. And I'm just going to press the mirror tool. And I'm going to click bodies to mirror. So it's important that you do bodies rather than features. And I'm going to deselect this merge solids tool. So essentially, if you had two objects that were coincident with one another, uh, to prevent zero thickness geometry, this is a very good tool to use, where it essentially makes them into one large body. OK. But that doesn't apply here because we don't have anything else to merge with. So I'm going to mirror this about the plane that we just created. And I'm going to click this body. And as you can see, it just floats in space like that. And perfect. So I think you can also see now that the connecting rod is going to fit right in between these two, two guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now for our next step. So essentially what we want to do is we want to create a new sketch. So for our new sketch, what we want to do is we want to click this front flat surface of this extrusion. doesn't really matter which one of the four you click, but I just clicked this guy. And this is the part that could be a little bit more abstract to see. So 
if I stop sharing and go back to our document regarding the piston, essentially what we want to do is we want to create this large circular portion that you see is being encompassed here. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do, so if I go back to our sketch, is I'm going to create a large circle. Okay. So by doing that, essentially what we're going to do is we're going to click also because something, sorry, something popped up for a moment there. Could it be additional participants? No. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So you can see it's all automatically giving me a vertical relationship here. And I'm going to create a coincident relationship with the plane that we created. And I'm going to create a, an arbitrary circle like this, but I'm going to attribute a dimension of, uh, I went with 9.5 inches. There we go. So that should be good in that regard. And now I'm going to create a bunch of lines. So lines will essentially extend from the side of your rectangular extrusion. And you're going to create a couple of these. So we're going to create one like that. And you have to make sure that they're horizontal too, and that they are coincident with the edge of our circle. Uh, also, sorry, I accidentally screwed up on a measurement here. This should not be 9.5. This should actually be, uh, if I look at it correctly, 9.1. Yeah, okay. my bad. Okay. Yeah, it looked a little large for me. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we'll create those lines again. My apologies for that. And if we ensure that this remains horizontal, we'll create a third line connecting these two, because what we want is a closed contour eventually. OK. And this is just an arbitrary line, no problem with that. But essentially, what we want to do is make sure that this is centered with the side edge of our, uh, of our rectangular extrusion here. So first, I'm going to give, the, give these two their own uh, dimension of 0. 0.4 inches apart. So they always need to remain that far apart from one another. And then I'm going to click on whichever one, and I'm going to find the center line of our line here. So what you can do to quickly select it is uh, right click on this line and press select midpoint. And you see it automatically gives us our midpoint. So if I go back to our dimensioning tool, oh, geez, sorry, I deselected it. <laughs> oh boy, where did it go? Here, it'll be easier if I get rid of this line for now. But uh, if I click on this, there we go. Click on that, click on this one. I'm going to give it a dimension of 0. 0.2 inches. So these uh, are 0. 0.2 inches apart. Yeah, sorry for the dimension between the two lines. How much was, was that? Oh, between the four. two lines, yeah. 0.4. Yeah. OK, and, and you dimensioned it with regards to uh, the, midpoint. the midpoint of the, the, the side, right? OK. Yeah, the side of our rectangular extrusion, exactly. So given that, what we can do now is close that contour off. So I actually, I deleted that line that we had before, but I'm going to put it back. And you can see everything is fully defined in that regard. It's just with regard to our sphere, I mean, our circle, uh, everything hasn't checked out quite yet. And that's likely due to some constraints. So uh, let's see, we have a diameter relationship uh, for its middle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to shift click on the middle of the circle. And I'm going to shift click with this coordinate axis point here, and I'm going to ensure that they're vertical. So essentially what that does is it makes sure that the, uh, the axis of the circle is right underneath the, ax the midpoint of our coordinate system. And you'll see everything is fully defined. Now, now what I want to do is I want to uh, sort of uh, put an offset so I'm going to make an offset of 0.2 inches using the offset entities tool. And if an offset to the, the biggest, the, the circle. Yeah, the largest circle. Okay. So this is where I got that 9.5 uh, inch uh, diameter circle from. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is what we have so far. Now, usually if I was in you know, my first year of catting and stuff, I would redraw this line four times because we want it to be symmetric. 
but we could just mm -hmm. use the mirror entities tool for this tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a random line right from this coordinate all the way down to our plane. And this will act as like our mirror line of sorts. So it's almost a reference uh, access to, if you can see it, mirror from the right-hand side to the left-hand side. So I'm going to click mirror entities. And for the entities to mirror, I'm going to click these three lines that we made. And I'm going to mirror it about that new line that we made. And as you can see, everything is fully defined. It automatically does that for us, which is super convenient. Uh, furthermore, I'm going to mirror again. So I'm going to click all of these lines that we just mirrored. So all six now. And now I'm going to mirror it about our plane that we had before, which is right in the center of our object. And if we press OK, we have all four of these lines very easily. And I'm just going to trim that uh, midpoint that we uh, mirrored it about. So. I'm just going to apply a dimension relationship such that these guys aren't under underdefined. So I'll do that really quickly right now. Okay. And this guy is this far away. Yeah, dimensioning is always the most annoying part of uh <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But uh we'll get it done. Yeah, there's a lot of dimensions. Okay. Uh, yeah, this one only has a distance relationship, so we'll make sure these two are collinear. Oh, whoops, too many dimensions. Let's get rid of this distance dimension here and apply a collinear relationship here. There we go. And the only thing that's underdefined are these points here. Okay. Once more, let's do this again. Sorry about this. <laughs> No, it's okay. I, I, I'm trying to do it as well. Um, yeah, it's just good practice because like if one component of your uh, CAD, if you change it up and you don't dimension things properly, the whole thing will just sort of be mm -hmm. So let's see. This one and this one, we'll give it a vertical relationship as well as this one and this one. Horizontal. Nope, too much. Okay. Um, yeah. I think for now, I'm just going to leave this one. Uh, it won't affect us right now because we're not going to make any modifications to the sketch, but just know for good practice, it's good to fully dimension your sketches. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But just for the sake of time, I'm going to keep going. So now what we want to do is we want to apply some fillets. So some sketch fillets. I've already determined this before. I want to apply 0.5 inch fillets to each of these corners. And essentially what we're going to do with that is we're going to click. Uh, oh, wait, sorry. I have to trim the entities first. So what you have to do is you have to trim these middle portions out first. Okay. And for now, it'll say, you know, it's overdefined. But trust me, once we're done, it won't have that error anymore. And if we get rid of a few dimensions here and there. Okay. So if we get rid of this guy, there we go. It's fully defined now. <laughs> That's all the okay. problem. Uh, what dimension did you get rid of? I just got rot rid of the distance dimension on the top and then the distance dimension between this point and this point or whichever one that I had before. Yeah, this point and this one. Okay, fully defined, perfect. Yeah. So now you click the sketch, sketch fillet tool and we actually have uh, little vertices to uh, go off of now. So I'm going to click this line and this line. You'll see it does a fillet like that. Another one like that. And we just keep going around the circle. This is something we could also do with the mirror tool, but you know, this won't take us very long to do. Mm -hmm. So we just keep going. And you'll notice we have all four of these fillets, or all eight, sorry. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to press OK. Yeah, that was 0.5, right? Yes, 0.5, all throughout. Perfect. Yeah, and now we're sort of getting somewhere. Um, so if I look back on my 
uh, object that we had before. So if I go back to my document. So I can see that the top half of our circle is hollow, but essentially the bottom half is not. So actually, no, sorry, that's for the exterior part. That, that comes later. Okay, we'll do that part later. So this should be fine for now. Now, essentially what we want to do is we want to uh, get rid of some lines. So I'm going to, oh wait, sorry, I'm sharing the wrong screen. <laughs> Here we go, sorry. Okay, that's better. So I'm gonna create some new lines and I'm gonna make sure that it is perpendicular. So as you can see, if we do this, it automatically creates a perpendicular line for us. And we can check this with the relationship. So we have a coincident relationship with this one. Uh, we can establish another one by selecting this point here. Yeah. So we should be good in that regard and just draw another perpendicular line like so. There we go. The nice thing is it automatically aligns it for you. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. Yeah, so you made it perpendicular to the outer circle. Yes, exactly. Okay, perfect, thanks. No worries. And then what we can do is we can use the mirror entities tool again. So I'm gonna redraw that mirror line that we had before. I'm gonna have that here for now. And essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mirror about that line again. And we'll have some lines over there. So it's currently unsolvable and that's due to some additional relationships. So if we get rid of a few, say, uh, let's see, if I get rid of this line, Sorry, my bad. There we go. Should be fine now. Yeah. So it's just underdefined because we haven't attributed a dimension to it yet. But I'm going to mirror these four lines that we just created once again. But now we're going to mirror it about our plane so that it falls underneath. And you'll see now it's all perfectly aligned. So all we need to do is just apply some additional uh, dimensions and relations to it. So we're going to apply vertical relations to those guys. And then it always helps to reference your origin. Um, your yeah. Yeah, sorry. So when you did the first mirroring, uh, it made it with no solution. Which one did you delete? Oh, okay. So I actually just got rid of the mirror line. Oh, okay. And it worked? Yeah. Uh, it, it just made our sketch underdefined. But again, that's something we can easily fix right now with mm -hmm. just Dimensions. But uh, I'd say that's only acceptable for sketches. As soon as you try to do that with a feature, you're going to run into some problems. So that's the one mm -hmm. rule of thumb. If you're going to delete a parent, you're going to have to do it with your, uh, with your sketches. So let's hope we can finish this dimensioning quite soon because I want to move on. It's a lot of guessing and checking for this particular part. We'll do a reference dimension like that. Okay, perfect, fully defined. Sheesh. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so now we have multiple contours, which is nice. So whenever you're ready, I'll move on to the next step. Perfect. Um, I think I didn't do the same dimension as you, but I think I got it fully defined. Yeah, as long as if it's fully defined, you're fine. Seems good. Perfect. Sweet. So we can extrude this now. So now we're going to extrude it in two different dimensions. So for we're going to do two different extrusions for this. Sorry, that's what I meant to say. So for the selected contours, I'm essentially not going to select these, uh, these large circular ones. Those ones are a no-go. I'm going to select this one. If we go up here, there we go. This one, another contour right here. We just essentially want to go around the whole circle. Perfect. On the outer edges. So one final contour here and here. Okay, nice. And what we want to do is we actually want to flip the direction of our extrusion, click 
up to surface and essentially click this back surface of this uh, rectangular extrusion we made before. Sheesh, okay, that took a while, but uh, there we go. That's one part of it. Now, if we refer back to our model, so if I share my screen and go back here, you'll notice on the bottom part of what we're looking at. So in front of the extrusion that we just made, essentially what there is is uh, there's like a big gap on the top and bottom halves, but then on the sides, everything's filled out. It's a bit tough to see from this angle, but uh, if I go back, I'll show you what I mean. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this sketch visible again. And we have the contours here. And essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press extruded boss slash base once again, and click on one of the contours of the sketch. So I'm gonna click this line and it'll automatically open up the extrusion tool without having to you know, reselect or redraw your sketch. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, would you mind uh, give me just a second? I think yeah. I did a tiny mistake. Oh, uh, yeah, for sure. Do you need help for any part of it? Um, well, it sort of extruded the uh, contours rather than the actually the actual inside of the the um, region. Oh, so you're saying it did the opposite. So it did the insides that we didn't want. Uh, no, well, it, it did like the same parts as you, but like hollowed out. Oh, I see. I see. I have no idea. Oh, I, yeah, I have no idea why. Uh, could you try sharing your screen? Um, well, like I said, it's on the oh. other computer. So. <laughs> yeah, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll just retry doing it like you did. Um, should be fine this time. Yeah, no worries. Let me know if you need help with that right now. Thanks a lot. No worries. But yeah, you, you can see it's sort, it's sort of starting to come together a little bit, which is the nice part of this. Mm -hmm. Actually, I just realized, I think I made an error. Yes, that is definitely an error in design. Can you spot it? Um, I'm not sure enough. Okay, so uh, look at, you see, where's the wrist pin going oh. in the context? Oh, Actually, yeah. Sorry, no, no, we're all good. It's supposed to be like this. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I was just thinking, how are we gonna insert the, the wrist pin? But that's not something we're necessarily concerned about for this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so when I do it, I get sort of like the, um, the sides of the, the, of the parts and, and not the actual, like... Um, uh, what do you mean? So, sort of the same way as you did, but the inside are sort, are sort of hollowed out. Um, oh, I see. Okay. And. Um, oh, yeah. No, well, would you would you mind showing me maybe like the. the extrusion yeah, exactly. Setting. Yeah, the extrusion settings sort of. Yeah. Okay, so what I did is I pressed selected contours, right? So I clicked on this tab here. And oh, essentially. I I made... Okay, oh. no, sorry, continue. Yeah, so if you clear, I'm gonna clear the selections again, right? So this is what we have for our contours. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna click on all of the little red outer portions here. But not the large blue portions that we have in the middle because those are not gonna result in the geometry that we want. And you see how everything's selected like this. And this is what it should look like. Mm -hmm. This is sort of the x-ray for it. So is that what you have as well? Um, not exactly. Uh, it gives me like a thin feature, I think. Oh, OK, OK. Uh, let's see. Oh, so I think I just got it. Oh, you got it? Yeah, I think so. I, well, I actually just deleted it and re restarted. So. Oh, OK. So did it end up working? Uh, I'll just put the settings back to see up to surface. Mm -hmm. Nice, okay. It Sorry worked. for uh, delaying the video. Oh, no, it's all good, man. It's all good. Uh, all right. 
So now we're going to press extrude boss slash base, but also remember to unhide your sketch. So you click this bottom, bottom arrow here and right click, press unhide. So once you've done that, we click on extruded boss slash base. And essentially, you see this contour here, this line? You're going to want to click mm -hmm. on that. So essentially, what the extrusion tool, what it does is if you click on like a flat surface, right? Um, mm -hmm it automatically prompts you to make a new sketch. And we don't want to do that. That's going to be a pain. Although we could easily use the convert entities tool to do what we want to do, but that's not the point. So by clicking that, I'm going to remove this previous contour. And now we're going to extrude in the other way. So rather than clicking the top half of this circle, I'm going to click these different components. So if we go, it's not showing the preview right now, but these are the contours I've got selected. Does that make sense so far? Yeah, I have that as well. OK, nice. So what we want to do is we want to deselect this thin feature tool. We don't want that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's what I had the, the first time around. Yeah, that's going to that's gonna complicate things a little bit. And if I go back to our drawing, so this is what we had, yeah. So essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to extrude by one inch now. And if we do that, this is what we get. So again, a nice little part of what we want. Uh, it's starting to come together a little bit. We could also get rid of these uh, exterior components as well. So again, no issues there. But does that make sense so far? Yeah, it makes sense. I have the same thing. OK, perfect. So let's see. Let's refer back to the model that we were going off of. OK, so we want a hole in this top portion, and we also want to flatten that. No issue at all. I can't see it for now, uh, however. Oh, no sorry. Yeah. I forgot to share my screen. <laughs> so uh, if I share my screen again. So what we want is a hole in this top portion of our piston head. Right. Yeah, so that's going to be super easy to do. Essentially, all you want to do is go back to our model. And essentially, what we can do is start a new, we don't even need a new reference plane. Essentially, you click on the bottom arrow of this boss extrude. So and we'll unhide the sketch. So unhide the contour. And I'm going to hide the one that we unhid before, just so that we prevent confusion. And I'm going to do an extruded cut. So an extruded cut from this circular contour here. And essentially, for the cut, I'm going to click through all both. So as you can see, it goes in both directions, and it's, it goes through every piece of material that we have. And if we press OK, this is what we're left with. So a nice little portion to put in our wrist pin. Nice. Yeah. Uh, but let me see. From an aesthetic standpoint, it doesn't look too great. So I may contemplate getting rid of it later on, but we'll see how it goes as we develop the rest of the piston. So now we're actually going to start extruding the other side of the piston head. So if we look back, so this is what we have. Oh, sorry. I forgot to share my screen again. Wow. <laughs> I'm an absolute newbie at this. OK. So. What we've made up to here is all of this circular portion with the exception of that little copper portion that you see here that's wrapping around the piston. Uh, we're not going to cab that for this one. Essentially, what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute that for a groove. But uh, I'll show you how to do each of those different components. It's actually a lot easier than what we just did. So that was the hard part. So if I stop sharing and go back. I'm going to create a new sketch on this surface here. So not on the part that we extruded outwards, but essentially on this back half here. And essentially, what I'm going to do from there is I'm going to go normal to our sketch plane. So you can press F to snap like that. And from the center of our plane that we established before, I'm going to draw another line 
that extends out all the way to the outer radius of our circle. And for further reference, we can add a dimension to it. So if I remember correctly, this whole thing, yeah, was 9.5 inches. And for further reference, we can click the middle of the circle. So you see, it doesn't have a vertical relationship with this, uh, with this coordinate system here. So for the dimensioning of the sketch and ensuring that it's fully defined, I've shift clicked both of those and we're gonna click vertical. And you'll see that it's fully defined now, perfect. Now this next extrusion is gonna be a little bit of an approximation on our part. So from what I can tell, this seems to be about, yeah, 0.1 inches for our extrusion. 0.1, that's a little, little too little. Let's say 0.5, yeah, 0.5 is adequate. So we press okay, and this is what we're left with so far. Now, what we'll do is we'll create another sketch on this new surface. And essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little groove for our, uh, for our circle, or I mean our cylinder. You put, sorry, uh, how much, 0.5? Yeah, 0.5, yeah. Okay. Okay. So are you at my step now? Uh, so you started a sketch on the, the that extrude this new extrusion yeah the face yep. of it so by doing that essentially what we're going to do is uh so i'm going to create a new circle but since we want it to be a groove we're going to ensure that this diameter is actually a little bit smaller than 9.5 so we don't even need to make a new circle right now essentially what we can do is we can press the convert entities tool and we can click on this face here and press OK, and you'll see it automatically translated the circle onto our new sketch. So essentially it's a projection. That's what the Convert Entities tool is very good for. And I'm just gonna offset this, uh, this projection. So I'm gonna click on that and say for our groove, if I reverse this direction, yeah, a 0.2 inch offset would be, would be fine. So how does that look so far? Yeah, I made the, uh, the offset as well. Okay, perfect. So, yeah, so sounds good. I'm gonna trim this outer circle now and it's gonna be underdefined as a result of this, our inner circle. But essentially we already have the shape drawn out. So if you dimension this and apply a diameter dimension to it, it'll be 9.1 in that regard. And then we just do the same thing where we fix our, uh, we fix the center of our circle to be vertical with respect to our origin. Wait, I think, uh, I'm sorry, I think I missed a, a small part. So did you do a first circle the, first, the same size as the, the other one? Yeah, so I use the convert entities tool for that. And essentially what it does oh. is it takes the full, uh, it, it essentially translates that sketch that you've selected onto your sketch, the new sketch. Oh, okay, because I just selected like the, the, the edge of the, the solid. I think I'll do it your way. It's fine either way, yeah. Personally, like, uh, it, it's more or less like a matter of convenience how you want to do it. Okay. Yeah, so there's no issue at all. And I've just applied the following dimension just to fully define it. And let's see, okay. I think we can apply an equivalent groove for this portion here. Perhaps a little bit smaller. So yeah, we'll do that. So are you good to go now? Uh, in just a second, I've got the dimension left to put. No worries. I've got a 9.1. So this, the second... Mm -hmm. The second dimension, you did it from the center to the origin? Uh, for the second dimension, uh, yeah, the center of the circle to the origin, exactly. Okay. Yeah, and I applied a vertical relationship just so it doesn't travel horizontally. Okay, perfect. Yeah. And how's that treating you now? 
I'm sorry. You good to go? Just a second. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm having a hard time with that that last oh. mention. Uh, no, 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 dude, dude, dude. Don't worry. I'm in no rush. <laughs> I'm just okay. wondering, more or less, like as a matter, like, do you need any help with uh, any part of it? Uh, for now, I'm good. I think I'm fully defined. Right. Okay. Perfect. So now so, all you oh, want to... Oh, sorry. Go for it. Wait, so I missed... So you're extruding the, the small circle, right? Yes, exactly. And I got okay. rid of the the larger one before. Mm -hmm. But again, it doesn't really matter what you do with that. But um, now I'm going to extrude this by 0.25 inches. So this is going to be a smaller groove for us. And it should look something like this. And now it's just a cycle of repeating what we've started with... Uh, you know, it's just a pattern as we saw in the, uh, the actual model itself. So if I share my screen here, we have to make, so that was our first groove with this sort of copper piece. So we're going to make another extrusion that's the same length, but with the larger radius, for the next one, then smaller circle, and then one larger one with the large radius. I'll walk you through it. So. I'm going to create a new sketch on the face of this guy. And essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on convert entities once again. And I'm going to click on this outer circle. So the one that we started with. If we press OK with that, it's fully defined. And there's not much else we actually need to do with that. Essentially, I'm going to press extruded boss slash base and extruded by 0.25 inches once again. And now you see we have our first groove. So it's really starting to come together a little bit. So how does that sound so far? Uh, I, wait, I, I just need to convert the entity. Yep. It's gonna take a second. No worries. And you understand how that tool works, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it converts something from another, ske another sketch to yours, right? Exactly, it's like a copy almost. Okay. And I'd say the best way of visualizing it would be like a projection of sorts, like in linear mm -hmm. algebra. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm good. Okay. Good to go. Sweet. So now we're going to start another sketch. So what I did is I extruded that by 0.25 inches, that new sketch mm -hmm. that we made. And we're going to create another one. And now this is another groove. So essentially what we want to do is we want to click this cylinder, the smaller cylinder that we had before. Oh, sorry. We'll click its edge. My apologies. And use the convert entities tool again for that. So if we do that, perfectly translates onto our sketch again. And essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another 0.25 inch extrusion. I think that's how large it needed to be. Yeah, 0.25 inches. Okie dokie. And now the next extrusion is the size of our larger radius once again, but it's, uh, it's a bit larger. So it's, I'm going to say 0.5 inches would be the best way to go at it. So I'm going to create another sketch on the face of this. I know it's a little bit repetitive, but uh, we'll get through it. And with the convert entities tool, I'm going to click this outer edge once again. And we're going to press OK. And now I'm going to extrude this one, this new sketch, which is fully defined by 0.5 inches. So how is that so far? Uh, yeah, that works for me. Okay, sweet. And do you understand the purpose of these grooves as well in the context of the piston? Uh, I'd suppose like for oil? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Because if you think about it, the piston, like when it fits into the housing, it's airtight. So there's no other way for you to get oil in there other than to inject it into these grooves. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we made that new extrusion. Now the next one, let's see. It's another small extrusion by 0.25 inches. So let's do that again. Sketch. And we're going to use the convert entities tool again. And we're going to click the smaller radius. There we go. And press OK. And we're going to extrude that by 0.25 inches once again. And that should be our last groove. So if we sketch again, 
All we need to do now is to take this larger radius and extrude it once again. So this one, according to our diagram, I think it should be 0.75 inches. That seems logical. Awesome. And this is what it should look like so far. So do you have something fairly similar? Oh, I think you're muted. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a second away. So you said 0.75, right? Yeah, 0.75 for the last one. So as you can see, it sort of like incrementally gets larger by 0.5. Okay. Yeah, perfect. I have it. Nice. All right. Uh, so I can't really see those top features. Let me see if I can get a better diagram of what our piston is supposed to look like. So if I share my screen once again, so let me actually open up this file. I think I already have it open. Okay. If I share my screen and we'll do this one. Okay. Yeah. So there's no need for that sort of top featuring up there. So I think we're pretty close to being done. It's just more, more or less a matter of making things a little bit more concise now. So let's see. Uh, oh, yeah, it stopped my sharing. Okay. All right. So I'd say we should add some fillets here just so it replicates what we had on our previous document. So let's say 0.5 inch, no, that's, yeah, 0.5 inch fillets seem fine. So apply them to all four corners of your, uh, or all eight corners, sorry. No, all four <laughs> of your little outer extrusion here. It's not showing any preview, but it'll do what we asked it, ask it to. If we press okay for that, this is essentially what we get. So it's starting to look a little bit more clean. So did he manage to do that? Uh, yeah, all good. Okay, sweet. Uh, let's see, what else could we do? What else could we do to make it more homogenous? I'm contemplating getting rid of these holes. I'd say, yeah, let's get, let's ditch them for now, more or less for the aesthetics. But uh, in reality, you'd need somewhere better to uh, actually, you know, put in your wrist pin. Yeah, shouldn't we need them to sort of slide the wrist pin in? Uh, yeah, if you want, we could keep them. I'm fine either way. Oh, it, it doesn't, I, I'm, I'm fine either way as well, but. Uh... Yeah, and in, in reality, yes, we would need those. Okay. Yeah, so here, I'll keep them just for the, uh, just for the sake of it. So, Great. yeah, I think that should pretty much wrap up most aspects of our piston head. Uh, I'm just double checking with the image. So I think we should be good. Yeah. So this is our piston head. Nice, we got another component done. And if I save that, so I'm just gonna call this revised piston head. And replace the other one. Oh, sorry, that other one's open. We'll call this revised piston head one. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open my assembly that I had before. Did I upload the assembly to Discord? Um, I'm sorry, I don't know. I, I did it uh, while watching the video, so I didn't oh, check Oh, that's this. even better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Um, so we'll create a new assembly from everything. So let's see uh, if I could find it. Where was it? I'm going to have to open it in my files. My apologies. Piston assembly. So essentially what you can do is create an assembly from the parts that you just made and apply it into our new assembly. So are you able to see my screen right now? One second. Got a pause. Pause the screen share. 
So we, oops. All good. Um, so I resumed the recording right now. Um, so I haven't done much. All I did was I just mated everything together, but I will unmate it so that we can do it together. So let's see, get rid of these guys. So now, as you can see, we have an assembly file with our wrist pin, connecting rod, and piston head, right? So do you have something like that open in front of you as well? Yeah, I just inserted the, the piston head. OK, perfect. Now, for everything to be consistent, I'm going to apply an appearance. So I've already done that for the, for the connecting rod. I'm going to add a polished steel appearance to this one and essentially apply that to the whole part. And what we can do is change the color of that within appearances. This is more just for personal preference, but uh, you could even run FEAs with uh, different materials on SOLIDWORKS and Abacus. But there we go. Just so that we're consistent with our colors. And I'm just gonna apply two concentric mates or one concentric mate and uh, a coincident mate. Wait, so sorry. Uh... Pretty, f really fat quickly. Uh, yeah. How did you change the color? Oh, yeah, yeah. So uh, did you see how I draw? I, I dragged this appearance. So I went into yeah. this appearance tab, steel, drag that onto that. And when you do that, it gives you options. So you can either do it on, you know, a feature, a body, or a part, right? Or even your full assembly. Uh, oh, OK. On the, the, I can't speak, the part, right? Mm -hmm. And then on the left-hand side, if you want to change the color of that feature, essentially what you can do is you see where I have my mouse. Yep. There's this part called Display Manager. You essentially right-click on whichever feature that you want to change. So Edit Appearance. And essentially what you can do is click on a particular part of it. So I, I made this one like steel gray. OK, perfect. Thank you. No worries. Yeah, and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make, apply a concentric mate. So we're going to click this interior cavity here, this interior circle, to this guy. So as you can see, they are locked in that regard. And then let me see here. Uh, we're going to take this guy, so this surface, and we're going to apply it to the bottom of this surface here. And now automatically you see we should not have any issues with rotation. So if I rotate this guy, oh, sorry, here, I think that part's fixed. So let's make one component fixed. Let's say the wrist pin is fixed and then everything else can move about it. If I move this guy, you see we don't really have any issues with rotation. This whole piston can move in its, uh, and it's specified, uh, what do you call it? Range of motion. So that proves that we did our design well. The only thing I noticed is my, uh, what do you call it? My wrist pin isn't necessarily fixed from a vertical standpoint, but that can be done later. So what do you think of that so far? Yeah, I have that as well. It works, um, works great. Sweet, awesome. So now we're done with most of the piston, essentially all we can do now is just add the fasteners. So I actually sort of cheated a little bit. Uh, if you notice on the, the portion of this uh, connecting rod, right? I actually made it into one part, but in reality, the front half of the connecting rod is actually separate from the, the cap here. It's just more or less to limit the part count. I, I made it into one part, but either way, uh, if you want the authentic experience, you could split it into two and go from there. But I'm just going to create the fastener very quickly. So let's see, what is, so I'm going to go into a assembly, oh, sorry, evaluate, measure. And I'm going to measure this hole because I don't remember what it was. So the radius is 0.3 inches, no worries. So we need a, uh, a bolt with a diameter of 0.6 a nominal diameter of uh, 0.6 inches. So I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to go into uh, Google and we're going to quickly search 
uh, standard imperial bolt sizes. And we'll see what the corresponding pitch is. So let's see. So if we go into the fastener size tables, and if we don't find anything, that's perfectly fine. You know, um, I'll just create a, uh, a novel portion, but uh, let's see. 0.6, so yeah, I don't think we have anything in that regard, of that regard here. So that's okay. The closest thing is uh, 11 threads per inch. So we'll do um, 10 threads per inch. So 0.6 inch diameter um, and then a pitch of 10. So I'll go back and I'll create a new file. Okay. So let's see if I sketch this guy out and I'm going to go into the front plane to do this. So we're going to create a new circle. Oh, and change our units first off. That's a very annoying. Uh, thing. On which plane did you go? Sorry. Uh, front plane. Front plane. Yeah. So I'm on the front plane now and we're going to create a new circle that is, that has a radius of 0.6. I mean, a diameter of 0.6. Okay, so I guess there's no complaints there. So if we go back, I'm going to measure out this length here and I'm going to add a little bit of a, an additional safety factor to it. So the length of our screw should be about 3.5 inches. So let's call it four, four inches. So that's how far our extrusion needs to be. So if we go back and extrude this guy, should be four inches. So that's a pretty long screw. Okay, okay. Now, what I'm gonna do for convenience sake is I'm gonna chain for the, uh, the end of the bolt here. So this front portion. Now let's chain for it by 0.1 inches. Uh, let's do 0 0.05 actually at 45 degrees. So this will actually help facilitate the uh, the bolt into the hole, especially if it's spot faced or uh, if it's uh, countersunk in any way. It also helps with uh, actually applying a uh, a thread feature within SolidWorks. But uh, essentially, what I'm going to do is I'm going to thread this, and for the start of our thread, and if your computer can't handle it, that's fine as well. We don't even need to thread it. It's more or less just for. Uh, you know, making it look a little bit more professional. But we'll start from this edge and go all the way up to our new edge. Yeah, sorry, could you just remind me quickly where exactly was... Um, oh, the thread tool? The, yeah, the, oh, the hole wizard, right? Yeah, right okay. under hole wizard. My apologies, I should have, I should have specified there. No, no problem. Okay, so let's see. We got this, this first uh, circle that we selected, that's gonna be our start. And then the nominal diameter of this chamfer is going to be our end. And you'll see it automatically selected a die, which is not what we want. Essentially, what a die does is it extrudes it. So uh, actually, no, sorry. A die is what we want. <laughs> My apologies. But I'm going to change the, uh, the size of it. So the diameter is fine for this one. For the uh, pitch, let's see. Uh, Let's keep it at 0 0.5. No, that's too little. 0 0.05. Yeah, that should be adequate. So you saw what I did there. I essentially just overrode the, the pitch. And that'll allow us to change the pitch to whatever we want. But uh, the issue here is this is metric. We want to actually do inch. That's better. Although it doesn't really change anything for the context of our selection. But if I press OK, this should hopefully work. I always have trouble with these threads. Nice. OK. But it did, did it do it properly? I don't believe so. Yeah. But we got to do it again. My apologies. Yeah, I had a rebuild error. Yeah. So I think what we need to do actually is uh, an inch tap. That should be better. 
kidding. Sorry, Max Aldorf is just loading. That's it. Use extreme thread instead. But we do not want to do that. Let's hope this works. Sorry, yeah, these threads are always the most tedious part of uh, what we try to do here. So did it end up working on your part? Oh, I think you're muted. Sorry, um, yeah, I was muted. Uh, so no, it says rebuild error, unable to cut the thread. Oh, it says asking you to extrude it instead, right? Yeah. Okay, let's try switching up the direction of our thread. So I'm gonna start our location from the top of our chamber and I'm gonna go all the way up to this end here. And that should probably be, a, yeah, that's probably a, a bit better. So we wanna do an inch die, that's one part. And we want to do extrude, I'd say. Extrude the thread. No, sorry. We want to cut. So if we do that, in terms of our result, okay, it gives us the same thing. So you see what I'm trying to do here? I want to go with the opposite uh, operation. So, yeah, so did, did you change the, the distance between the, the override pitch? Did yes, I did 0 0.05 for yeah. the pitch. Yeah, so let's see. I want to, I think an extrusion would honestly be better. So perhaps it'd be best to change the, uh, the nominal diameter. But uh, let's see. Yeah, sorry, I always struggle with uh, threads. It's definitely one of the harder parts for me. Just getting it right on the first try. No worries. No worries. Yeah, so, okay. Let's try an inch tap. Okay, and if I press OK and extrude instead. Yeesh, okay, yeah, that definitely did not work. I think, wait, let me see. It's very tough to see with these. Uh... Oh, no, wait, it did work. What am I saying? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're good. So did you see what I did? Oh, I, I think you're muted again. Yeah, sorry about that. I have some background noise, so. so. No, it's all good. But, uh, yeah, I, I did the same, I think. Looks like it worked for me yeah. as well. Sweet. So uh, if we go back then. Yeah, this is what we need. Yeah, sorry, it's just, it, it looks so small that I didn't even, it didn't even look like it did it properly, but. Uh, yeah, you know, this is not a standard bolt by any means. That's also another thing to keep in mind, <laughs> but that's mm -hmm. okay. Uh, so we'll do a new sketch on the back end of our bolt. And if we go and create... So what we want to do now is we actually want to make a hex head. So I'm going to orient this camera such that it's not confusing. And Let's say, okay, let's go to approximately 0 0.6. 0 0.6 would be nice. So if we dimension from this left-hand uh, vertex to the middle, we'll do a 0 0.6 inch distance. And from the top to the middle of our sketch, oh, sorry. That, that would make it overdriven. Uh, this guy's length will clarify like this. And that's all we need to fully define it. So does that make sense so far? Uh, yeah, it makes sense. Okay, perfect. Uh, or wait, actually it makes, it, it gives me overdefined for the second dimension. Oh, so all I did is just this dimension. So you, oh. you sort of have to play around with it a little bit. So. Uh, say if I did another dimension, let's say I did this side length rather than its height. Mm -hmm. See, it's overdriven. Okay. So I did the vertical height. Okay, perfect. Well, I, I, I got it. So, okay. Awesome. Thanks. No worries. Yeah. And we'll extrude this guy. 
So if we extrude that and let's say by 0.5 of an inch, yeah. No, that's a little too much. Let's say 0.25, that should be better. Yeah, so 0.25 inches, that's what we're going for. And just note that, you know, I'm sort of eyeballing everything a little bit right now too. So if it doesn't look entirely accurate, that's probably why, but I think this looks more like a bolt, right? Yeah, it looks perfect. Okay, perfect. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unhide the sketch from our previous extrusion. And essentially what I want is this little outline that we have here of both of our uh, hexagon as well as the circle within. Because this is the trick to getting that sort of, you know, that little rounded finish at the vertex of each uh, side of this hexagon. This is how we get that. So we use the convert entities tool. And we can essentially, I'm going to click select chain and inner loops. So it automatically selects that hexagon for us. Or okay, but this. you created another sketch on the face, right? Yes, yes. Okay. And I essentially selected both the hexagon as well as the circle. And by doing that, we have a fully defined sketch already. Now, are you ready for the next step? Um, not totally. So mm -hmm. it's all good. when I tried to take the hexagon, it gives me only a side. How did you uh, select all of it? Oh, sorry. How did you select the whole hexagon? Like, oh yeah. It so, only selects one side for me. Yeah. You know, when you go into convert entities, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I selected select chain and inner loops oh. one by one. Okay. Yeah. Did that work out? Yeah. Nice. All right. Perfect. Thank you. No worries. So now this is where the trick comes in. And this is uh, one of my favorite parts of making uh, fasteners. So essentially what we have to make is a cut for that rounded finish, right? And essentially I'm going to select this middle circle here, but we're going to press flip side to cut, right? So it actually cuts out the edges, almost like a PB and J sandwich. And what I'm going to click is this draft tool. And what we're going to do is, so what the draft tool actually does is it sort of, rather than having something go straight, it tapers it or makes it go outward. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, just a quick uh, question. So mm -hmm. um, what did you select at first so that uh, it takes the exterior? Oh, so flip side to cut. Uh, yeah, but what's the, the you, you selected like the circle at first? Yes, so that's the contour, okay. yeah. Because if you do it the other way, it, it won't work. Because essentially what the draft tool does is it drafts outward. Okay. Yeah. And I'm going to put a 60 degree draft angle for this one. And for the length, we can do 10 inches. Doesn't have to be, it just has to be large. So if we press OK then, and if everything worked perfectly, yes, this is what we're left with. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so that was a trick I actually learned fairly recently, but uh, it's very useful rather than having to, you know, sketch and write it out like that. It's an absolute pain. <laughs> yeah. So that pretty much sums up this whole bolt here. So do you think there's anything we should add to it? Looks pretty clean to me. Perfect. All right, so I'm going to save this guy. So we'll call it Bolt. Very creative, I know. And uh, go from there. So let's see. If we put it in the context of our assembly, so if I switch tabs and insert our Bolt, it should hopefully fit perfectly. So the key, if you want to mate something with a thread, it's to sort of click this outer sort of, it's a bit tough to see, but this outer edge of your thread. So this thread is tiny. I just realized that, but you know, we've already made it. Beggars can't be choosers. But um, from there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mate it with this interior channel. Doesn't really matter which one you choose. Uh, 
it should just be coincident. So this actually didn't mate properly because it was only showing us tangent. So let's do it again. So if I click that edge, okay. What happens if I try to move this? Okay, let's say this whole thing is fixed. Uh, let's see, fix that. Okay. If I try to move this, okay, it fits perfectly. Awesome. So what, what's the mate you use? You use tangent? Yeah, so for this one, it's tangent, yeah. Uh, a lot of the times, coincidence better. I mean, not coincident, concentric. But uh, it doesn't seem to be recognizing the, uh, the thread too, too well. And mostly because it's sort of like a very obscure thread. So, okay, I, so um, instead, did you use click on the face of the thread? Uh, yeah, so let me double check what I clicked on. Again, as long as if it like falls into the channel, it should be fine. But uh, I clicked on, okay, it's very tough to see like this. Here, let me redo the thread, I mean the, the mate. The key thing you're trying to look out for is if it allows you to have the motion that it's intended to have, right? So if it can rotate within that, it's perfectly mm -hmm. fine. So let's see, if I click on the outer edge, let's see how that goes. So if I click on the outer edge and I go here, it allows us to do a tangent, yeah. So just, you see this little thick part here? Mm -hmm. That's what I clicked on. Okay, wait, so I'm I'm sorry, I'm having a bit of a hard time with this one. No, it's okay. And you see it actually rotates decently well, which is good. Uh, the only thing is I actually didn't uh, do a tap of the uh, interior cavity. So usually that's what you'd have, but for the context of this, it'll be fine. So you used the edge, right? Yeah, so if I pull this bolt out, I click this interior cavity. It doesn't matter as long as if it has the radius that you're looking for, it's mm -hmm. perfectly fine. Yeah, it's it's on the the bolt. I'm having a bit of a hard time. I'm, uh, oh, uh, in what regard? Uh, to actually get a, a like a face that matches correctly. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I think I got it. Yeah. I I put it. Oh. I have it concentric, but it works. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so this is the one issue with the tangency mate. So you see it actually, essentially what the tangency mate does is you see that edge that we selected? Mm -hmm. It ensures that it's tangent to the circle that we selected to, right? So that can either be an interior tangency or it could be an exterior one, like the one we have right now. So that's mm -hmm. actually not good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply another mate Right. So what I did is actually applied a, uh, a coincident mate with this, uh, this face here to the front of this, uh, this component that we had here, right? Just so that it stays fixed in terms of the, uh, the Y axis or the Z axis, okay. right? I'll add it as well. Yeah. And then for the next mate, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a concentric mate. So if we do that, oh no, that's not what we wanted to do. My apologies. Let's try this outer exterior portion. I make it concentric. Yeah, see, this is always the tricky part, dimensioning and mating. Okay, and make this guy coincident with this guy, concentric, sorry. No, it's over defining it. Okay, let's not do that. Let's try this guy, the context of. Yeah, I just selected like the, the thread and it worked. Oh yeah? Yeah, I selected the thread and the inner and it put, it, put them concentric. Oh, okay. Uh, so the thread by the side? Did you do that? Um, like I just clicked from from far away, oh, so okay. I'm not too sure why it selected, but it worked. Let me see if I click this edge. Okay, 
Maybe I should get rid of the tangency feature, but you sort of see what we're getting at here, right, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, that's again, something I, I'll figure out right now. So I'll just play around with it a little bit. That's the whole thing with these uh, mates. It's not really something you can get. Oh, okay, there we go. I got it right. Okay, <laughs> nice. Uh, just as I was about to know something you can get right the first time all the time. But uh, there we go. <laughs> so what I did is I actually clicked this uh, cylinder here, the edge of the cylinder. And I think that okay. makes sense because that was originally supposed to be our nominal diameter. So what we can do is, this is a nice little shortcut I like. If you hold control and click and drag, you can duplicate easily like that. And we're going to apply this to the other side now. And I click that face, and we're going to mate it to this guy. Should be concentric. Beautiful. Yeah. And I'll apply another coincident mate to this face. Brilliant. Now we're almost done. Almost done with our piston. And it is looking pretty spicy. I do like this. <laughs> so uh, have you managed to do those mates? Uh, yeah, I'm doing the last one, uh, the, consent, the, the coincident mate. No worries. And I've got it, I think. Yeah. OK. So I'm going to close the bolt file as well as the old connecting rod file. Just so that everything, uh, just so I don't take up as much RAM. Okay, and change that one. Okay, brilliant. So all we need now is a nut for this one. So if we go into new part, and our nominal diameter was 0.6 inches. And I think our hexagonal, uh, the distance from the center to the edge of the hexagon was 0.6 as well, right? Uh, I'm sorry, you, what did you ask? So uh, you know the top of our hexagon for mm -hmm. our bolt? I think the distance from the center of the circle to the edge of the hexagon was about 0.6 inches, right? Yeah, I think okay. to, to the, um, like the sort of corner, I think. Yes, exactly, the vertex. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna make a nut that essentially emulates that exact same thing. So we'll click the front plane as our new sketch plane. Go on the hexagon tool. And, oh God, units, IPS, sorry. Okay, back to the front plane. <laughs> and click the hexagon and go from there. So, we're going to dimension the edge to the center to be 0.6 inches. And then use the same vertical height dimension that we did before to fully define the thing. And that should work out. Now, the key difference here is I'm actually going to uh, add an additional circle in the middle. And that's going to represent the nominal diameter of our bolt. So this should be 0.6 inches as well for our diameter. So have you got have you got all that? Um, yeah, I'm just doing the inner circle. No stress. Yeah, so that that worked out pretty nicely actually. Everything's 0.6, so that wasn't even planned. But, uh, <laughs> whenever you're ready, um, I'm going to extrude this uh, profile here. So we'll make this a 0.25 inch offset. How about, let's make it, yeah, 0.3 inches would be better, I think. 0.3? Right? Yeah. And you just want to exclude that interior, uh, that interior diameter. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of like a, it's sort of like a donut. There we go. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that exact same trick that we had before, uh, rounding out the top. So I'm going to show the sketch such that we can see it. And 
I'm going to make an extruded cut, clicking the interior contour of that sketch. So for the selective contours, we'll do this circle, but we're going to press flip side to cut once again. And we're going to change the direction. And we want to use our draft tool again. Uh, oh, wait, sorry. I clicked the wrong uh, contour. It should actually be this larger circle. So if I can click that again. Oh, wow. It's not letting me do that. Okay. I think I may actually have to draw that in. Sorry. One second. I'll do it on this other side so that we're being a little bit proactive. So we'll use the convert entities tool. And we're just going to click the circle. That's all we need. So uh, if I do that, and if I do extruded cut and flip side to cut, there we go. So are you at my same uh, step as well? Um, I'm still making this sketch. I should be able to uh, do the extrude in a sec. No worries. So yeah. flip side to cut. Yeah. And um, 60 degrees. 60 degrees. And I'd say give it like a one inch extrusion for one the inch. depth. Yeah. I think you could even do through all as well. And if you press OK, it'll give you that. And what we can do is create a new reference plane, right? So actually, we don't even need that here. I'll just create a new sketch on the other face that we didn't end up, uh, didn't end up cutting. And I'm going to actually draw a circle that represents that same uh, that same feature. And we're going to do the extruded cut once again. Same sort of logic, 60 degrees. And if we press OK, it should give us this. So how's that so far? Uh, yeah, I'll just, I'm a bit um, late. Oh, no worries. Uh, what step are you at? I'm just making the circle. So now flip side to cut. Yeah. Great. I think I'm at the same step as you are. Yeah. So essentially all you need is the extruder cut on both sides. So that's mm -hmm. where you should be at. Okay. So now the final, uh, the final part of our workshop is to add the thread into this, uh, into this diameter here. So I'm going to click, it doesn't really matter which side you click for this one. I'm going to click one edge and then I'm going to click the opposite edge for the ending. And we're going to do an inch cap. Yes. Override the diameters once again. So 0 0.05, that was our pitch. And actually before I do that, I think I'm going to make it a little bit easier for the screw to fall in. Sorry, I, I should have done this before, but I'm actually going to add a little chamfer on both sides. So a 0 0.05 inch chamfer. Okay. Yeah, my bad. It also makes it a little cleaner for when you do the thread usually. Like, uh, I don't know if you've seen, but like the thread actually terminates at some points and then like you see you have like some ugly extrusion hanging from it. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll click the new inside of our cylinder. And we'll click the other new part portion and override the inch tap such that we Yeah, for, for the chamfer, you, how much did you put? 0 0.05. Okay, so you left like the initial settings? Yes, exactly. At 45 degrees, pretty standard. Okay, great. Yeah. And let's see. Oh boy. And what did I do for my bolt in terms of the uh, the size? Let me double check because it's actually producing slightly different results. 
let's see. For the thread, I did. Okay, number 080. So we'll do the same. It should also be an extruded thread. I should have mentioned that as well. Nope, sorry. It's inch die extruded. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, inch die extruded. So hopefully that should work. Um, it looks pretty decent, but you never know until you actually put it in. So I'll save this and I'll put it into the context of our assembly. So let's see. If I insert the nut. Yeah, it looks pretty solid. Okay. And I'm going to click the same edge that we did from before. And I'm going to click this edge. And it's concentric. Brilliant. So it actually fit perfectly. And I'm going to make this edge coincident with the flat edge of our, uh, of our extrusion. So if we look back, and if we rotate our entire part, beautiful. It rotates freely. So did uh, you? So oh yeah, what's up? Yeah, what what uh, mate did you do? So I did a concentric mate and a coincident mate. So for the second coincident mate, I went with this flat edge. Okay. Okay, okay, and then I'm just going to duplicate this on the other side. So let's click this surface with this surface. Concentric, brilliant. You could even do like a lock rotation type thing where if one of them moves, the other one moves as well. So it, I think it makes it look pretty cool as well. But again, <laughs> that's more of just a uh, thing you do for mm -hmm. practicality. Wait, so you put, uh, what did you select to make it concentric? Oh, concentric? So I clicked, if you're looking at my screen here, you see this big oh. part that doesn't have a thread? Mm -hmm. I clicked that. And for both okay. of them. For both of them. Yeah. Okay. And that is pretty much it. We have wrapped up our piston. You already did both? Sorry? Oh yeah, I did. Damn, you're, you're fast. <laughs> well, all you have to do is just, I don't know, did you see the control shift method for uh, duplicating things? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, it's with the mate, uh, the mates that I'm having a hard time again. Oh, it's no stress, man. Yeah. Um, I see a little bit of an interference here, but whoa, well, it's fine. For the context of this workshop, it is fine. But the, my favorite part with SolidWorks is always seeing how things uh, end up moving together. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Any luck? Uh, yeah, so I, I am finishing up the first one. Uh, no stress. Yeah, so what did you think of this uh, of this tutorial? Is there anything else I should change with regard to it? I'm sorry, I was a little bit all over the place today, but. No, no, not at all. Um, I, I, I liked it a lot. I mean, uh, the, the piston is really getting, uh, starting to look good, so. It's pretty exciting. Well, I appreciate it, man. Um, nice thing is we're actually thinking of collaborating with um, the bioengineering students or there's like a bio design group. Oh, okay. Yeah. And as well as uh, the, I don't know if you've heard of the McBim uh, group. The, the, the one. 
it's like CAD for civil students. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we're oh, no, I, I haven't heard of it. Yeah, we're, we're going to be collaborating with them pretty soon. So I'm excited for those as well. Nice, nice. Yeah, man. Oh, wait, I'm going to hide that one sketch because it looks a little ugly. Beautiful. Okay. Okay, and I'll stop my share here. Unless if you want to see it. Uh, no, that's fine. I'm uh, pretty much done. I just have that second nut to uh, to mate correctly. No stress. Yeah. So I'll uh, I'll stop the recording here for all those seeing afterwards. If there's anybody seeing afterwards. Um,